Hi there guys, this is Simon from IV Audio, and today I'm going to be showing you another Reaper script. I did not create this script, Xrem made this script, so it's available on his website, which either you're watching it on his website, or it's linked in the description below. So let's have a look at what this script does. The point of this script is to automate the process, partially or even fully, of cutting legato samples. So when you cut legato samples, like I have here, Usually what you'll do is you'll come and look at your sample and you'll pick some sort of reference point to cut. So let's say I'm cutting at the very end of the first note. So somewhere around here, and I'm going to hit split and then I do that for every single note, right? So, so I'd have a bunch of things that look something like this. Oops. I'd have a bunch of things that look something like this and then I would extend out the start of these the same amount so that the transition point of the legato sample happens at the same distance from the start of every single sample. So this can be a little bit difficult to do objectively by hand, so I thought, well, I'll try to have a script do it for me. So the way this script works is you export your audio as MIDI, you import the MIDI into Reaper, and then Reaper, or rather Xrem's Reaper script, will chop up the audio based on the information in the MIDI file. There's a couple different ways to get a MIDI file of your audio. I personally use Melodyne, so I'm going to show you how to do that. There's one caveat to using Melodyne, which is that you need to take note of what the tempo is in Reaper. So the tempo here is 120. So as soon as I open up Melodyne, I'm going to set the tempo to 120. Otherwise, it's going to get unhappy when I try to export the MIDI. So I'm going to grab the close mic, as always. You usually want to cut your samples based on your close mic. And we'll just wait for Melodyne to analyze this massive audio file, which will take a minute. All right, now that's done. That took a little while, and Melodyne's being a bit laggy because this is such a ridiculously long audio file. But it still works anyway. So here we've got the MIDI representation of that recording session. And we see it looks like some nice, happy little legato transitions going up and up the scale. Uh, so as a first step, I'm just going to select all of these. I'm going to go to quantization macros, and I'm just going to correct the pitch center to 100%, which I don't know if this really makes a difference, but you know, I'm thinking maybe it'll help more accurately export the MIDI. I'm not really sure. Um, and you can see I've got a bunch of extraneous stuff here from where we're talking. The script actually takes all of this sort of thing into account, so if there's talking in your session, you don't need to remove that. But there are a couple of places, like here, where you see we've got this random note here that's not in the scale. We've got another random one here. And if I were doing all of this for real, I would go through and delete all of these extraneous little MIDI items, and I'd make sure that the pitch was being accurately read everywhere. Because this is just for demonstration, I'm not going to bother to do that but that's another pointer to keep in mind. Remember, you need to set your tempo before you import the file. If you don't do that, Melodyne will analyze your audio file and try to determine the tempo of the audio file, which is not going to work at all for a recording session since this session was not recorded to a click track. So now I'm just going to go to File, Export, as MIDI. Entire length, Export, and let's drop that right on the desktop and we'll call this Flute MIDI. And once again, this is going to take a second. Now that that's done, we can open up Reaper again and drop in our flute MIDI file. And if I drag this over to the start, you can see it's a little tiny bit longer than the other two audio files. But theoretically, if I did this correctly, and if we trim the start of this a bit and line up the and, theoretically, this should line up perfectly with the audio. Let's just trim that a bit, since those are the sustains anyway, and we don't really care about those. And just line that right up with the end there. And, well, look at that. It seems to have worked pretty well. And again, it doesn't necessarily matter that this be aligned perfectly. You know, whether the MIDI's here or the MIDI's here, doesn't matter altogether that much. What's important is that the timing remains consistent throughout the entire MIDI file. Once you've cut the audio, you can always choose to shift the cut point uh, earlier or later on all the samples, and it'll have exactly the same effect. 
All right, so we've got a bit of a jump cut here because the first time I ran the script, it crashed because I ran it on far too much audio. So as a side note, you probably want to split up your session into multiple sections before running this script. So let's go ahead and select all our items and just split a couple of little spots here that we'll run the script on. So the way you run this script is you bind it to a key. So in this case, I've got it bound to Control Shift A. I'm now going to multi-select the audio that I want cut, then I'm going to put my mouse over the MIDI item, and then I'm going to run the script. Here we get some options. We get X offset, Y offset, octave, detection window, and insert markers. So the way this script works is it looks at the MIDI data, and it looks for not overlapping, but it looks for transitions in notes within a certain detection window. So in this case, the detection window is two milliseconds. And the offset X and offset Y are how far before and how far after the detected transition, the script will cut your audio. The script also inserts MIDI note names for the starting and target notes, and you can shift the octave of those MIDI note names using this octave parameter here. And finally, insert markers will insert a marker at each transition point with the name of the transition point, which is pretty cool as well. So I'll just turn that on so you can see what it looks like. If I hit OK, bam, we get a bunch of editing. So let's have a look at what the script did. So far, it's looking pretty good. Even though my player played notes really close together, like here, it would have been nice if she'd waited a little bit longer before playing the next transition. But as you can see here, we've got, you know, here we've got one that got uh, misidentified. It really should have been cut over here. But the rest of these all look surprisingly good, considering this was done automatically in about half a second. And I've actually got a little beta instrument that I've built using these rendered straight out of Reaper with no additional tweaking after the fact. So I'll have a couple audio demos of that up as well that you can listen to. Um, but this is the script. It might be updated in the future. I'm not sure if I can think of ways to improve it. This script is by no means the be-all end-all solution for editing legato samples, but it can make the process quite a lot faster, as now you can just sort of go in there and tweak all of the samples individually, but it does most of the hard work for you, which is pretty cool. So once again, you can download this script from Ixheim's website, which is linked in the description below. I want to give a huge thank you to Ixheim for making the script for me. It's been pretty cool. Uh, you can check the description for some links to some audio demos. That's about all I had to say in this video. So I hope you found this somewhat interesting. And as always, thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.